Hello, and welcome to this episode of Booksmart's Authors on Show, a creation of Clarissa Burt, founder of In the Limelight Media. I am your host, Christina Franci, and today I am so thrilled to be interviewing Jean Prager, a creator and author of the Do Something Wonderful Protocol. Jean, it is so awesome to have you on the show. I can't wait to dive into your book and what it's all about and for our um, listeners to understand what this wonderful book can bring to their life. So before we dive in, can you give the audience a little bit about your background and kind of how you got to where you are today? Yeah, no, I'd be happy to. And thank you so much for the opportunity of being on your show. And for the listeners that are tuning in today, you know, I think we have some worthwhile information to share. Uh, I created the Do Something Wonderful protocol based upon kind of, uh, it comes from a sad place actually, where I ended up witnessing my father's suicide attempt, um, sitting on the phone a thousand miles away, talking to police officers, and they had to knock down the door, and um, eventually they found him. While I was on the phone, they were trying to revive him and getting him to a hospital where he could get the care that he was needing. And I was thinking to myself at the time, how in the world did we get here? Because I talked to him the day before, he seemed fine. But where we ended up was such a such a sad, disturbing place. Um, he was able to recuperate. And over the next 10 years, he went in and out of these manic depressive episodes, never fully recovering to the full creativity and the love of life that he had previously. Um, and then just about 10 years ago, um, I started seeing similar types of symptoms in my own life in terms of this mental health where I just would look outside and I was wondering what in the world is good about today, even though it'd be perfectly sunshine and, and uh, the weather was perfect and I was going to have doing something fun. Um, it just didn't, it just didn't kick in for me that I could be resolved and be peaceful and happy at that particular moment. And where I started thinking through this whole process between my father's experience and between what I was going through, I decided to create this protocol. And the protocol is based upon doing four to five things positive for other people during the course of the week and then focusing on ourselves once or twice each week. And if we go through that process over a 100-day period of time, people will turn this 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 series of different acts of kindness for others and for themselves into a habit. And they find out that after that 100 days, it becomes almost a way of life. And the benefit associated with it is just absolutely extraordinary. I mean, it's um, it brings peace, it brings happiness, it brings joy, it brings better social relationships with people that you engage with randomly during the course of the day. It brings self-confidence. It brings um, a lack where people were experiencing loneliness and isolation before. It allows them to feel like that they're connected uh, to a bigger cause. As a bigger world. And so what I think is this opportunity is to really allow people to change their perspective by changing how they conduct their lives each and every day. You know, you brought up a really interesting point. And I did this experiment myself, was complimenting other people. And I'm telling you, I got such a high off of it. Like, my genuine compliments. And I just, it really did uplift my spirits. And I think that, you know, I don't know the Bible that well, but I think there is something in the Bible that kind of says, you know, uh, like be nice to your strangers or give compliments. I don't know. I don't quote me word for word on that at all, but you know, it is very true when we actually extend like kindness to others, it really uplifts our spirit. And I, I totally did an experiment on that. I was like, okay, I'm going to give one person a compliment a day. And then next thing, you know, I'm shooting like 10 compliments. Like I'm feeling sure. high vibed, like, and yeah. I'm glad that you brought that up because I really think that it is the secret sauce because we don't understand that we really are one, you know, not everyone understands that we are all one. Um, you know, a lot of people think that we're separate or different just based on like the way we look or just whatever. I mean, it's hard yeah. to see outside of the box. Um, well, let me let me give you an example of something that I think that might be kind of useful for the viewers um, and the listeners to just figure out kind of the process that I went through, because you're absolutely right. Is this, this is 
it's, it's somewhat Christian based because if you look back to Christianity and not just Christian, I mean, it's all religious groups mm -hmm. believe in this light um, that emanates and this light is truth and wisdom, basically. But it's also about this giving mindset that we create in this prefrontal cortex of our brain, our emotional centers of our brain, to be able to think outward without thinking inward all the time. And this is where I felt trapped, where, and I can see where my father felt trapped in, th in this regard as well, is that they feel like, you know, I have 20 things to do today. I have to go out and close this many deals. I have 120 employees on my payroll. I need this much of cash flow in order to support that many people. And you begin thinking about what I have to do, what I'm going to do for me to be able to provide the environment and the structure for everybody to be successful. Um, and it's it's a pressure driven type of society or or business environment that we live in today. And so I get it, and especially for moms as well. I mean, moms live through exactly the same um, scenario, except they have to deal with the children primarily and with the husband, and they deal with all the pressures and the external type of commitments in terms of running people around to various locations. But when you break out of that cycle and you can try to create this giving mindset on a holistic basis, it makes a big difference. And what you learned is it doesn't take very much time. Let me give you just one example, which I think is really interesting. This is Oscar. Mm -hmm. And Oscar is a waiter at a sushi restaurant. My favorite sushi restaurant in Salt Lake City is called Mint Tapas. And um, he, I asked at the conclusion of our meal, Hey, you know, Oscar, could you bring by a small, very, very small doggy bag for this leftover piece of um, sushi that I had left over? And he brought out the soy, a soy cup. It's like a literal plastic soy cup that is so small. I mean, you imagine you can fit any type of leftovers. And I found it so humorous and so funny that I took a picture of him. And then the next day, um, I drew this picture of him kind of holding this uh, soy sauce cup. Um, the two days later, I was able to deliver the picture to him in a frame with an inscription of saying, thank you for making such a memorable night. Well, he wasn't there night, that night, but I left the picture there for him to pick up. Um, and I went back there about two months later, and I was there with a business group, a small little business group. And Oscar was working that night. I said, Oscar, did you get my picture? And he said, that was you? You sent me the picture? And I said, yeah. And, and he said, I, I want to let you know, I hung this picture in my bedroom. It sits above my dresser. And every night I go to bed, I look at it. And it's just that reaffirmation that somebody did something that was a kind type of um, engagement with him, that it made for a lifetime type of memory for him. Mm -hmm. And for me, hearing his joy expressing about it, uh, made a joyful experience for me. Now, what happened after that is, is that the rest of my little dining party was asking, so what in the world are you doing? <laughs> you know, you can imagine what other people would say if you're getting that type of response from a waiter. Um, and as an added benefit, we got a free dessert for the night. So <laughs> yeah, that's always a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and that was completely unnecessary, right? It was completely unnecessary to get any form of um, you know, dessert. But what built me up at the moment was just his positive enthusiasm, his smile, his engagement. I knew I made a difference in one person's life. And not only that, I could tell that the other waitresses and the, and the, and the chefs, the sushi um, chefs in the back were all, they, they were all kind of in the know. They kind of knew exactly what was happening. And so they were all had kind of smiles on their face. And so just that one kind act led to multiple engagements that ended up being a very positive experience. No, that's wonderful. I mean, that makes me smile. I mean, I'd be so, that would be a definite memory for me as well. You know, if that, someone did that to me, so I can only imagine like how he felt and and it, it really does make you feel good doing something nice for someone else or a stranger and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, there are also activities for yourself in the book, you know, not just like helping others. Um, why the added focus um, on you and the reader? Now, this is absolutely critical. And I'm sure that you feel this in your life and the listeners um, obviously feel this as well is that we get so pressed in our daily activities that we tend to forget about ourselves to some degree. And we're running around doing whatever we're doing. This key of focusing on others is, is, is important, but it's just as important to make time for yourself. Mm 
and giving yourself because you are an individual, you're, you're a creature uh, of the world and you deserve just as much attention as anybody else. And so serving yourself and thinking about yourself and allowing yourself to release yourself from other uh, types of requirements in terms of you know, meeting schedules and trips and things of that nature allows you to be able to break free and create the rest and the freedom that you need in your life. And so the ability to give and the ability to take self-care is a critical component to this program. And so the balance is four to five times external, one to two times for yourself. And these activities can be anything that you choose, but it's something that you enjoy doing. For example, one of the things I enjoy doing is, uh, is, and this may not be enjoyable to everybody, but there's this small little area up in the canyon that I go up to that requires you to go up 1,200 feet and about 1.2 miles. And I kind of pace myself at about 27 or 28 minutes, typically when I get to that destination. And in this little lookout area that they've developed, you can look up the canyon, you can look down the canyon. And I spend about an hour to even an hour and a half up there sometimes just in meditation um, and in thinking, planning and things of that nature is probably one of the most restful, peaceful experiences that I have. And I do that on about a once a week basis when the weather is right and the snow has been heavily heavy in the Utah area this year. So I only get up there beginning of May and then through September primarily. And this activity alone helps me to rejuvenate myself and it helps me to keep on going. And there's some activities that I participate in that I really don't enjoy, to be honest with you. For example, golfing is one of those, is that my, I have a son that's a really excellent golfer and I have a grandson that's excellent as well. And, and then there's grandpa and dad, that's not all that great. <laughs> <laughs> But I still go because they like to go, but I find it as a hit to my self-confidence, to be honest with you. So that's why I don't enjoy going. Um, and I, you know, I hit, I can, I can get a score of around the mid eighties to uh, the high eighties sometimes, most of the time, but still it's not that great when you see these great golfers going on the golf course. So my point is making sure you, you, you select activities that you really, really enjoy, that you really actively get involved with. And if you can invite others along to those types of activities, it's even that much more meaningful. When you can share it with somebody, it means that you can share something that's meaningful and personal to you with somebody else, and it makes it a great experience for both of you. Yeah, no, it, that's very true and important. And, you know, a little humility never hurt anybody. <laughs> yes, well, that's true. That's, well, that's a good point. Maybe I should look at it from that perspective that the game is teaching me humility. That's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, and, you, and it's good to look at it as like quality time with your family and, and things like that. So, no, but that's great. Yeah, exactly. So what would you like the readers to take away from reading this book and um, how can they get their hands on it? Well, this is for this book is part of a not-for-profit foundation that I founded called Positive IQ. And so we don't, our goal is not to make money, and which I know is very different from how most people market things. Our goal is to make sure that we can make a meaningful impact in a person's life and, and hopefully change the trajectory or enhance the trajectory that they may already be on. Mm -hmm. So I think the book does really an excellent job of taking, uh, giving you an overview of the protocol, uh, talk to you about the suggestions and making it effective for you, what not to expect from the protocol. I think that's really important to address because some people think that this will solve all the problems in my life, which is not necessarily true, but it will make your perspective different on how you deal with the challenges in your life. I also go through the 100 day um, journey that I went through and I took pictures of each of those journeys and we did illustrations of each day so that there's probably about 140 to 160 different illustrations contained in the book itself. It also contains a thousand and one suggestions of things that people can do for others and that they can do for themselves. And so they can select different activities that they choose from. Um, and I know at the conclusion, at the end of the day, what people are going to feel if they, if they go through this protocol, they're just going to find peace. They're going to find greater happiness. They're going to find greater joy in their daily experience in life. They're going to find greater connection, um, both in terms of their family, their loved ones, as well as in society, as well as in the workplace. And so it has a universal type of, type of effect. 
And the other important thing to, I think, really important, important point that I just want to make sure that we just re, re emphasize here is that we talk about our connections to others in terms of other humans that we may be in contact with, but this is about our environment, right? It's about everything that we engage with. This is about animal life. It's about the, the forest. It's about the trees. It's about the plants. It's about the oceans. It's about the waterways. Wherever you're at, you can make a difference, whether you're um, it takes taking care of and cultivating things correctly, taking care of a pet correctly, making sure you're picking up trash in the environment. You can make a difference wherever you end up going. So it extends far beyond what our human interactions are. It contains how we interact with life in general. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. We know we all deserve happiness, calm mind and fulfillment. And um, it sounds like this book is the key to helping people reach those goals. Um, and so they can purchase this book um, on Amazon and they can also receive it at Barnes and Noble. Yes. And then you can, independent booksellers should be getting it this summer as well. And so ask for it. And if they don't have it, make sure they order it. Uh, so <laughs> they can have it in stock for your friends and for your community. But I hope people take us up on that offer because it, it just will be a new revelation uh, and re-emphasizing some core beliefs that they can that use for, them, for themselves and share with others. Yeah. And then I also think we discussed earlier that you may, you have a free offer for people who are interested in the book. Yes. So inside um, there will be a place where people can go uh, that they can download this card that contains the protocol that they can print out and they can put it on the refrigerator or the mirror or wherever it might be. We also have um, only through the book, you can gain access to three or four more chapters. And so if you want to apply this protocol in schools or church organizations or as families um, or in the workplace, we have some additional chapters um, that will allow people to specifically apply this concept into those types of settings. So there's a multitude of different ways that people can take advantage of this, but we first want to make sure that people understand the protocol, put the protocol in place in their own lives, and then they can figure out how to implement it in a greater, in a greater scheme uh, in the different types of environments that they engage with. Awesome. Well, I love that. So Jean, you know, thank you so much for coming on today's show. It was such an honor to have you on. Um, if all of Jean's links are down below in the show notes, don't be shy, go say hi. And thank you for listening to this episode of Book Smarts Authors on Show, a creation of Clarissa Burt, founder of In the Limelight Media. Thank you so much, Jean, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Thank you.